today we have an absolute powerhouse joining us. She is literally the queen of content creation and a master at helping businesses grow their brands using YouTube. If you are ready to turn your content into a money-making machine and scale your business like a pro, stay tuned. Today, I am so excited to be chatting with the Jessica Stansberry. Hey, Jessica, for many of you. Um, <laughs> I have obsessed over her videos for years. I think I followed you shortly after you got on the YouTubes. And, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So I'm girl crushing a little bit. And I am just really excited for her to be here. Her membership I'm in right now, Crash, is insane. I have partaked of her education in the past. And I love that she's no nonsense. She gives you everything she's got. And she's amazing. So let's just put that out there. All right. Jessica Stansberry helps content creators and entrepreneurs use content to start, grow, and scale their businesses so that their content makes them money while they sleep. Jessica's YouTube channel, email list, and Instagram accounts are full of helpful nuggets to help content creators become CEOs. Welcome, Jessica. I'm so excited you're here. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Can I just carry you around with me and let you introduce me everywhere I go? Oh, you're a hype great. woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be great. I Thank would you. have no problem with that. Okay, good. <laughs> I always start with this question with all my guests because my audience has really loved this information. It makes us feel less like unique unicorns and more like we're in the company of people that are good. Tell us a little bit about how you came to the position you're in now doing what you do now and the little windy roads that got you there. Yeah. And it is, it is a windy road. It's a, it's a little, you know, it's, it's a little bit bumpy at times. <laughs> Roll <it> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I had, I think I've always been very entrepreneurial. I was, and I don't know that entrepreneurial is the word I would describe myself as, as like a young teenager, but I was always like a go-getter. Like my parents told me I couldn't have a cell phone at 14 <laughs> because they weren't going to pay for it. And I was like, fine, I'll get a job. And I wasn't allowed to have a job at 14. We couldn't get a work permit here till 15. And so I went and got a job under the table for cash at a restaurant. And I was like, I'll buy my own dang cell phone <laughs> by golly. And I did. And so, yeah. And so I've always been that type of person that like, if I want something, I'm going to figure out a way to get it. And I think that like translates to being an entrepreneur because it's like, okay, well, I can, I can do that. I can figure it out. And that's exactly what happened when um, I had dabbled in photography business and just different things through college while I had my corporate job after college too. And then I got pregnant with my first son and I was like, I cannot come back to this job that I hate so very much and, and take my baby to daycare. There's nothing wrong with daycare, but I hated my job. So it was like, why would I yeah. let someone else and pay them, them and pay yes. them? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I'm like, why would I, why would I do that? And so I, I became determined to be able to quit my job, but like we could not afford for me to quit my job. And so, I mean, I did all kinds of stuff while I was like, while I was pregnant, while I was on maternity leave, I started this like local website that like, whatever it never went anywhere <laughs> like it literally it had the best name though so the county that i live in is ash county and so it was ashmom.com oh, and I that was is like, so smart you're good at names though too I, I do feel like it's one of my strengths it I is. really do and so but it went nowhere <laughs> You know, where I don't even really remember my vision for it, but, um, you know, so when I, it came time for me to go back to work because I hadn't figured anything out and I did, I went back to work and the first day back to work was just this terrible experience. I, they, they yelled at me for some things that I did not do while I was on maternity leave that other people were blaming on me and some things I did do. Like I yelled at my boss from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, you were um, in the she hospital. yelled at me. You were in the <laughs> yeah. hospital. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She yelled at me for not calling her soon enough. And I was like, the hell. And so I just started yelling at her. Um, so just different things. It was a terrible, I, I call it my bathroom floor moment. That's kind of like what that moment was. Um, because it was just a terrible, terrible day. There were things that happened, um, at home that day too, like with my kid, like just different things. And it was like a total bathroom floor moment. And 
I needed that though. I didn't need it. My husband needed it (laughs) to be able to see how miserable I was at my job. Because at this point he was like, oh, you know, we need your job, da, 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 you know, all these things. And then when he saw that, he was like, okay, we'll figure out a way. (laughs) Yeah. And it was at that point that I was like, okay, I can figure this out. And I started doing graphic design on the side like I had done before. I put in my notice two weeks later. So I stayed about a month, quit my job. And, um, Get that yeah, a like, couple s- paychecks in so that yes. <laughs> <I'm familiar. laughs> yeah, exactly. And started doing like graphic design and taught myself web design. And so I was doing like blog design, web design, that kind of thing and stayed on that path, made no money. I made enough money to like help with groceries. Yeah. You know, and that was it. And I made absolutely no money. And then in 20, I'm trying to think of the timeline here, 2015, we moved houses. And when we moved and sold our other house, we had some financial wiggle room because our other house was huge. And so like we had a big house payment. And when we had that financial wiggle room, I was able to like take a step back and say, okay, I am at this point, I had two kids yeah, and I was about two years from them both being in school. And so I'm like, if I don't figure this out and make more money, I'm not going to be able to do this. Yeah. Like I'm not going to go be able back to, to work. That's the whole thing yes. on your head. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And my husband would say that in conversation. Like when you go back to work and I was like, the hell <laughs> who said I was going back to work. So I would be like, you know, what in the world? And so I took a step back and I found, this was the time when I found the like online coaching mentor space. Facebook groups were a big thing at the time, that kind of thing. And I realized that I could make more money. I realized that I was like selling myself short. And so I raised my prices and I went from literally like $150 for a whole website. I was charging people. Oh, you're kidding me right now. (laughs) I am not kidding you. And when I look back on it, I'm like, what the world was I doing? (laughs) <laughs> and, but I went from that to like $800, which was a huge big jump. It jump. still wasn't enough, but it was, but a, it big was a huge jump. jump. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nobody's going to pay me. And within a week of raising my prices, I had a client. You put yourself and, in that price range where people trust you. When it's too low, mm-hmm. you're actually pricing yourself out. But most people don't yes. realize that, of course, when they jump in. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so I, um, I raised my prices and... I kind of started making more money and we were financially more secure and I could use a little bit more of it to invest back in the business. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, And I continued doing web design until I started like on YouTube and I started realizing that I was pretty decent at like teaching things. Mm -hmm. I eventually transitioned out of web design and graphic design into like the teaching coaching world. And so that's kind of how it all has like come about, you know? I know you're, you have a really cool niche. I always think about like the YouTube bros and this podcast is for women by women. So I just want to put that out there. Um, But everyone has different style when it comes to YouTube. But the thing that really caught my attention is that you really focus on entrepreneurs that have a business, whether they're coaching, whether they're web design, whether they're photographer, like whatever they're doing and teaching people how YouTube can get you clients, which is Mm -hmm. how I'm booking clients right now, thanks to your education. It's a real niche area that I don't Mm -hmm. see out there. Most people are trying to teach people how to be content creators. And you do that too. But Mm -hmm. there's a really good focus on businesses, which just makes me so happy. Can you (laughs) share, because YouTube is really, I mean, you have specialties in all over digital products, you name it, we'll kind of try to touch on all of it. But can you share some key strategies for using YouTube to help you grow your business Mm -hmm. and turning content into sort of a reliable source of income? I know that's a big question, but I'm very (laughs) action oriented on this podcast. So just a couple things that you think would help people to take YouTube to that next level. I know one of those things because you talk about it all the time. (laughs) Yes. Oh, what's what's that one thing? Thumbnails. Oh, yes. Girl, yes. Um, I mean, I could talk about anything, honestly, because there's so many things that so many people are doing wrong, you know. Um, But the biggest thing, honestly, the biggest thing is actually doing it. The thing that people don't realize, especially business owners who want to use YouTube to grow, is that if you're if you'll just do it, if you'll just be consistent and you'll just do it, you're going to be in the top. 100 percentile. So many people are not doing it. And if they are doing it, they're inconsistent. If they 
um, you know, they, they might start and stop and start and stop and like whatever, right? Or they're not doing it exactly right or whatever. So if you'll just like do it and learn as you go, you're going to be way ahead of everybody else in that type of business. You know, it's one of those things where I'd say the biggest thing, the biggest thing to get you ahead is to, to do it (laughs) because most people are not doing it. Um, but then on top of that, I would say there's like a core group of things that will cause you to grow and be successful on YouTube. And that's titles, thumbnails, and your actual content, obviously, like the topic and the way you structure your content. And so if you can just get like 1% better every single time you publish a video with one of those things, it'll just get better and better and better and better and better. So many people get stuck in thumbnails or they get stuck in the content or they get stuck in the titles and that's what causes them not to do it, right? And so it's like, do it, be okay with being bad. Nobody's seeing those first videos anyway. Ain't nobody watching. You can always you know, hide them later on. <laughs> yeah, nobody's watching. Like it's, there's going to be an audience of zero because nobody's going to watch them and be okay with being bad and then be okay with getting maybe some critiques or some help from friends or whatever and do the next one just 1% better. And if you'll do the next one, 1% better and the next one, 1% better and the next one, 1% better, eventually that adds up. If you get 1% better every single upload and you upload once a week, you're 52% better by the end of the year. And that's a big deal. That is amazing. I, yeah. I mean, when I joined your membership, I think I had like 90 something people following me and I had had the YouTube for years, but I didn't do anything. It wasn't a priority, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Suddenly investing in education and making it a priority. Now I have people that literally say on a consultation call, I found your YouTube video or I found your podcast. And I was like, okay, so that's a non-negotiable. That has to be done every week. And I think that was the one change that really, really helped me. And I think I'm closing in on 700. So it's a slow process, but I'm already getting clients. So if someone out there is like, it's not going to make a difference until I'm monetized, that is not the truth. Just as a head (laughs) up. Not at all. Yeah. Like when I first like started teaching the YouTube stuff, you know, I had this girl and I'm trying to think, I'm pausing because I'm trying to think of like what she, I don't even remember what she did now, but it was definitely like a client service of some yeah. sort. And she had like 150 subscribers within like a month or so of working together. And from that 150 subscribers, she was completely booked out and it was all from YouTube. All of it. I, uh, that, that, yeah. that, flip that switch in my head to make it Mm -hmm. a priority. I I do talk with people a lot. I'm a Pinterest manager and I am educator and I, all of my clients, sadly, (laughs) this is something that we as educators have to talk about all the time. Consistency matters. And I hate to say it. Nobody wants to hear it. You want to think you can just spray some videos and then stop and then spray some more, but it's, it's all about consistency when you take your foot off that gas because it's busy season. If you're a wedding photographer or whatever, Mm -hmm. you're going to wonder three months from now, where are all my leads? Well, it's because you haven't been doing your marketing. It is the truth. And it sucks. Because, but yes. And like YouTube, like you're dating YouTube. So if you keep ghosting YouTube, they're going to be like, oh, I'm not picking up their phone call anymore. You know? <laughs> and so like, you know, like true, that is, that true. is the relationship. Yeah. Yes. And so then you have to go through the process of getting them to trust you again and that you're not going to ghost them. And then you do ghost them again. And they're like, dang it, I fell for it again. And then like this, the next time it's going to take even longer to gain their trust back. And so, That's the kind of thing that we have to think of is like, you are gaining the trust of the algorithm. And if we don't keep the trust of the algorithm, then we're going to have to keep gaining the trust of the algorithm. Whereas eventually, if you'll just do it right from the beginning and be really consistent from the beginning, eventually you can miss an upload and you can, you know, take a week off or two weeks off or whatever, and you'll be fine. But you have to earn that trust first. And in her membership, the link is below. It's called Crash. It's super cool. And I am a member. But if you want to take action, that is one way you can take action today. It's super affordable. I feel like there's so much education in there, but particularly when you're going to film, you got your makeup on, you got your lights on, you got your camera going, do a couple videos. Like the batch recording is the thing that saves me because I could be sick 
and I still have a video, right? Yes. And I have even batched it enough to go on vacation and have videos going out while I'm on vacation so I could actually enjoy vacation. So yes. Okay. So let's switch topics a little bit. Okay. Talk to me about your local marketing agency. I am so intrigued by this. Mm -hmm. And so tell me why you started it and why you choose for it to be local. Yeah. So this is such a good question. Nobody ever asked me about this on podcast episodes. The deal here is (laughs) I live in a very small town. And you know this, but people who don't know me may not know this, but I live in like a teeny, teeny, teeny little town. Nobody here knows what they're doing at all with marketing, social media, any of it. And we have a couple of people who do like social media marketing, and I'm going to do that with like hard air quotes, you know, (laughs) Um, because... It's, it's really, they'll just like post. There's no strategy. That there's is, no, uh, yes. say that again, because I feel like <laughs> I'm a big strategist and I yes. know you are too. It is, mm-hmm. you could do anything, but if you don't have strategy behind it, you don't even know if you're successful. Right. And it makes no sense to me. I'm like, what? And why are people paying them to do this? Like, I can't, I can't figure it out. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, you can, you can do social media or you can do social media. Like, (laughs) what is the point if it's not giving you leads, it's not giving you sales, it's not, you know, growing your following? Like, what's, what's the point, you know? And so we have a few of those people here. And I was getting regularly getting asked, like, well, do you do this for other people? Do you do this for other people? Blah, blah, blah. And I have a team behind me. So I'm like, okay, you know, maybe we could. Like, maybe we could do that. Um, Let's try it out. And I actually tried it out once before, but I only had one team member. And so it was just a lot for her, you know, to really make, because if I'm going to do an agency, I'm not going to be in the grind of it, you know? And so it was a lot for her to manage local clients and we were getting a lot of like our lower package people purchasing, mm. which is great, but that includes them doing the content and work. they weren't doing mm-hmm. the content. And so then we were like, I felt like I was dropping the ball, blah, blah, blah. Right. So we, we let it go for a while, but I was continuously getting people like, I would love for you to take over our social media. I would love for you to take over our social media. So we just opened it back up um, probably a year ago. No, more than a year ago now. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I keep it local because I feel like I can help local people the most. And the thing too is I wouldn't go on the internet and market myself as like a, a, a social media marketer. Like that's so broad, right? <laughs> like I, I just, I'm not going to teach Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and ads and, you know, YouTube and like all of these things, cause it's just too much. Yeah. But here locally, I can be an expert in all of those things because Nobody else is. And And nobody outside of your area mm -hmm. knows your area as well as you do and knows what the, know what the people want to see or hear on social media as well. Yes, exactly. And the really cool part is that um, right after we kind of opened the doors back to the agency, the actual town, and it's not the town I live in, but it's like the main town in my county. Yeah. Um, they came to us and were like, we really want you to take over our social media. And I was like, yes sign me up. (laughs) And we've been working with them for like a year now and it has gone so well. They've grown so much. We've seen such a big like uptick in their following, but also their reach and all of this stuff. Cause we actually know what we're doing, right? Not to talk too bad about them, but the people that were doing it, it was just like a stagnant photo. And we all know that doesn't work on Instagram. They're still doing that on other accounts and it's driving me insane. It's like a stagnant photo with like the logo in the corner. It's like, that doesn't work. We actually added another account to their social media and do like a dog's account for the town because it's very dog friendly. It's a super fun agency. And I also feel like you are someone who really also wants to give back to your community. I mean, that's how I I see it. I do. That's how I see it. Because you you talk about your little area, a slice of Mm -hmm. heaven, if you will. And when you talked to the, it was the community at one point you were talking about it. And your face like lit up to be able Mm -hmm. to help the people where you live. I'm very into community. And I think it's so helpful to shop small when you can. Totally. And, you know, on that note, I I do. I want to be involved in my local community. I joined the chamber like 2018. It was before COVID. And then like that is really, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but it was a very, very clicky, (laughs) not great situation. (laughs) So I dipped out of there during COVID. Um, But like the whole reason I joined was because they had these like mingle 
yeah one of those, like morning mingle sessions or yeah. whatever and I was like oh I love this like I love to be involved in my community and so any any chance I get to be able to do that I think yeah. is like it's good for me my team loves doing the content and we're able to actually help these businesses. And so I think that that's like the, the core of it. And at first I was like, I mean, you can't even find my local agency website. Well, actually, I think it's linked on my, my, my website now, but <laughs> there for a while it was. No, no. And I was like, I you have even... an agency? I, yeah. Like, yeah. When you first talked about it. Yeah. And I didn't even have it linked like I don't have it set up in Google, so you can't even find it. Like if you Google like marketing yeah. in my town, you yeah. can't even find it. And and I, I, for a while I liked that. Um, but now I'm like, you know, we've got this really systematized. We've got yeah. this like down to an art. And so now we're starting to do things to like market it market the marketing agency more, Yay. Um, which you've seen, you've probably seen, I filmed a commercial. I am, I'm like, you, you always leave me on such a cliffhanger, which is part of strategy and YouTube, of course, yes. closing those loops. I cannot wait. Tell me a little bit about the experience of filming that. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Um, so the, the biggest thing was like, you really, when you go into something like that, you really have to have like a storyboard. You have to know exactly what every scene is. And sure, things can change because a couple things did change. Like when we were doing it, I didn't like something or yeah. even when I was editing, I was like, oh, I don't love that. Um, but you have to like know that. And I mean, we booked out the, we booked out a um, studio uh -huh. and we booked it out for three hours and we were there like an hour and a half. Like it was like super easy, super quick. Wow. Um, yeah. I had the commercial done in two days editing wise because you, I knew because exactly. You, yeah. You knew exactly what you, uh, first of all, yeah. you're a planner, which makes my yeah. heart happy. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> that's <laughs> yeah. what I am. With stuff like that. <laughs> Some stuff I'm like, woo, Let's blah, 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 Stuff like that I am because I knew I had to be. I knew if I went into it like willy nilly, it's a 40 second commercial. I'm like, what the crap? I, I it takes me 40 seconds to say my name, you know, and so it's like, I don't know how to do this. And it ended up being really I can't wait for you to see. It. I'm but, dying. And, and I hoped it would be out before now, by the way, by the time we're recording this, I hoped it would. It would also help if I could go to the movies and see the damn thing, because I'm trying to. That's what I want the end FYI, of the vlog to be. FYI, Jessica was filming a commercial to be shown at her local theater. At the movie theater. I have yes. my movie theater has the same thing. Never even thought about it. And boy, those commercials that are there right now are really old fashioned. So I know oh this gosh. is, you're going to be a slice of heaven in oh my theater. gosh! And so like the goal here, right, was to like market the agency, mm -hmm. also show them that we could redo their ad because this would be a really high ticket thing yeah. to do for the agency. And I would love to do it. Um, but also it's a fun YouTube video to have. Right. And so like filming the process, it was so a like twofer. A killing, <laughs> yes. Killing lots of birds with lots of stones, you know? Um, but I went to the movies. I'll, I'll give you a little spoiler alert. Okay. I went to the movies to watch it Friday, last Friday, because it should have been live. I get there. The movies won't work. Like the projector will not work in the theater that I'm in. <laughs> For real. Somebody's like, for real. Would not work. They're, they fiddle with, I only have 30 minutes. I was not there to watch a, a movie. No, I was you only were there literally to watch. there to see. Yes. Why, oh. Yeah. And I have to go get my kids. And so I'm like, okay. And so I wait and I wait and I wait. 25 minutes in, finally the owner of the theater comes in. And he's like, I think we got it. And sure enough, here comes the screen. They bypassed all the local commercials and just went straight to the movie. <laughs> because he was having issues with the commercials. So he just wanted to play the movie for people. I'm like, shit. <laughs> and so I, I, I leave and I tell them, I'm like, hey, I was just here to watch I my commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I like walk out and then I went back last night. I was like, okay, let's do this again. And again, I only have 30 minutes to like do this. I walk in. Thankfully, I got there early. They start the local ads like 10 till seven when the movie's supposed to start. And Cyprus, which is one of my employees, she's also in there, but she's there to watch the movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it was really funny. And we're the only ones in there besides one family, because it's a Monday night. Yeah, in yeah, small yeah. Town, right. Yeah. And there's one other family in there, and I know them, and I've already told them what I'm there for. So I'm in the back, like, vlogging. I've got my little vlog camera, and I'm like, you know, whatever, because nobody's behind in the, the scenes. Need some behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> I film my own face for 10 whole minutes, watch all these local ads, and mine's not in it.
That's, it's just not there. Again? Yeah. So Cypress turns around and she's like, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I'm literally like, what in the world? And so I just walk out again. We have now emailed them because they told us it was live. Like so, it should have been live. So they are going to play it longer than they originally? I, I mean, like, right. wh- well, you have a great attitude about it. I would have been a little upset after all that work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, that's just it. It's like I have like went out of my way. They told us it was live. You know, the first time was the theater's fault, which like whatever. But the second time it's like, okay, this is the ad company's fault that runs these. And then it's like, I don't even know these people, right? They're not local. And so you know what? The reason I have a good attitude about it is because it makes for good content. The video is going to be amazing. I'll be really excited to watch that video now. It's fun, though. It's fun either way. Yeah. Your uh, email list is known for its helpful little nuggets. How can content creators or business owners effectively use email to market and nurture their audiences to drive sales? Oh my gosh, this is such a good question because, okay, so many people think this about all social media, all content, all things, is that you're going straight for the jugular. You're going straight for the sale. Like the only reason to send an email is to like sell to your people. And I have always really prided myself of like from the very beginning on the fact that people love my emails that like people I got in, I got a response. I will read it to you. (laughs) I sent an email. You probably read it. It was about Taylor Swift and her dear diary style. Love it. Writing has always been something that I've always loved. Like I've always loved writing. I was always good at writing, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I like it. And I like that like, in this style of writing, I can write how I talk. And so then I get, I get so many responses of like, I could hear you reading every word. Exactly. And <laughs> you know, it's like, all oh, right, yes, that's the goal here, right? Mm-hmm. But I sent that email and this was a response and it just says, Jessica, this has to be one of the best emails I've ever read. In fact, I read it three times. Inspiring, entertaining, educational, thank you. And This yeah. is something that's super important because a lot of people are using AI to help with their emails, which I totally get because I right. I used to love writing. I don't like writing for business. And I think that's yeah. probably my problem is yeah. that I need to might write more personally. Anyway, I digress. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's really interesting that so people are using AI. They can never get that type of an email. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. So we're... And, you've always been a writer, but where do you get that, the ideas or the, because it's so totally different each time. It's not like your standard cookie cutter email. Yeah. I I think a lot of it for me is I just get ideas and I don't know, I have to figure out where they fit. Um, So like in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this, this thought process that Taylor Swift writes I mean, from like a dear brilliant. diary. She's yes. brilliant, but yeah. Yes. And I'm like a new Swifty. I'm 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 a new Swifty because I was a I was a Kelsey fan. And then I really love Taylor. And I Well, which is the Taylor opposite. Swift. Most people were a Taylor fan and they they become to love Kelsey. Right. I'm a football girl. <laughs> Me? Like I just I love it. Yes. Like I had always liked her music, but it was never like a Swifty, right? Mm-hmm. But I love her and Travis together. Oh. Which is a a podcast married, for another time. Whole another, yes. whole another yeah. conversation. <laughs> yes. And so um, I'm a newer Swifty, right? And so I'm seeing this article and I'm like, oh my God, they're so right. Like it is, she doesn't care if they're relatable to you or me or this person over here. We cannot relate to her running off the stage with her dress unbuttoned, screaming, but daddy, I love him. Like we can't relate to that, but we love it. And there's little glimmers of things we can relate to in songs, you know? And that doesn't mean we have to relate to the whole thing. So I had this, this epiphany that like, oh my gosh, I feel like that's how creators are. I feel like it's okay if we don't have to relate on every single thing. Like you're not going to relate with every single thing I share because you don't live in a small Southern town and have one movie theater and one high school. And like, you're just not going to relate to that. And so it's like, I've always held myself back. I've always shared that, but I've held myself back from like fully sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Fully immersing yourself in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, Oh, I love this idea that creators should really not worry too much about relatable content in that way. They they can just share and so I had this idea and then it's like, okay, I go through the gamut of, does, is this a YouTube video? Is this a podcast episode or this is an Instagram post or is this a email? 
And for me, I already had some YouTube videos planned out. It didn't really fit or feel good as a YouTube video. Same thing with a podcast episode. And I was like, I think this would be a good email. And so that's just kind of how that comes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I keep a running list on my phone of just ideas. They, and half the time, I don't know what they're for. <laughs> they're just yeah, like, but they're just ideas that idea. you're parking yeah. in a parking lot of sorts yes. to be able to come yes. back to when you're looking to be inspired. <laughs> yes. And then I'll be like, oh, I need to write an email or, oh, I need to do a YouTube video or, or yeah. whatever. And I'll go through my list and then I'm like, oh, that would be great or whatever. And so to go back to your original question, <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to get there. We had to get there. I love it. So I really focus with my email list and I have from the very, very, very beginning that these need to feel like emails that you want to open. Like when I send an email to you, I want most of my list to be like, oh my God, Jessica sent an email. Let me see what it says. Like, I love everything she writes. I want that type of thing. And then when I sell something, more people are opening those emails Number one, because they enjoy opening my emails. Number two, more people are going to buy because they feel more connected to me Mm -hmm. because they're reading the emails. Mm -hmm. And so that, I think that is the bigger strategy beyond anything else with email marketing is to really, and honestly, it's content in general, is to really connect with your people personally. Connect with them on that like personal level, because then when you sell, you're the person they want to buy from, even if there's four other people selling what you're selling. Exactly. And it feels like a letter from a friend, like my friend in my head, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. And I, I do love that. I do love when I get the response, I could hear you reading this. And I'm like, oh, yes, because that's what I want, because I want you to hear me reading this. Like I don't. Yes. So I have a friend. She's a be- she's one of my best friends in high school, still friends, whatever. But she writes very differently than how she speaks. You know, it's always like so the way, confusing. Yes. The way she speaks and then the way like she presents on Facebook is very different. It's always bugged me. It's always bugged me. I'm like, why are you doing that? She's you're being you're more to... polished. Yes. yes. And I think she's trying to sound smarter. I think she's trying to sound something, but it comes off as super inauthentic to me. And so I've always been really careful. Oh, that's like sort of that. been in the forefront of your head. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely lean toward professional and mm-hmm. giving advice and taking action versus sharing. And I think mm-hmm. that's the difference. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I think it should be a goal. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. How do you manage the balance between content creation and running the business side of things? Like if do you have any advice for creators or business owners who are struggling with that balance? Yeah. So the biggest thing I would say is that if there is a piece that you are a bottleneck for that you don't have to be a bottleneck for, hire that out. I hired my first VA with absolutely no money to hire this girl. And I literally like, I was, but what I did was I found a local person who wanted to work from home and who wanted to start a VA business on her own. So we bartered kind of, I paid her, but I paid her yeah. lower. Yeah. 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 Cause what, you have like, also you a know. trade. Sure. That's yeah. I love. So that. then I'm, um, yeah. So then I'm also training her on all these like online systems and processes. But he and gives her like that. that education for sure. Yeah. And so I did that and had her for like five hours a week. So I was probably paying $50 a week or something to have this VA that like managed my inbox because that was the part where I was losing my mind. If I had to see another email from somebody that was like angry, like a, and not even angry, but like a not great client email. Like, so at the time I was doing web design. So I'd get emails that would be like, I hate every, every second of this. <laughs> Okay. So let me back up. But then that would put me in such a funk and in such a bad mood. Instead of, so I like removed the emotion from it. I put somebody else in my inbox and then they could convey it to me in like a different way. Like here's the bullet points of what they want changed, you know? And so like, and that way I'm not reading into it that I suck. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a very different message. Or they suck. And so, but either way, someone's suck. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And so it's like, okay, that was a big thing. That was a huge bottleneck for the business. And so I put somebody there. And then as I grew, like, okay, what is another bottleneck for the business? I need to put somebody there, blah, blah, blah. And so for me at this point, I've had full-time employees since 2020. So I had my first full-time employee in 2020. I've had full-time employees since. I do not run the business. I don't run it. You create content, come up with the ideas. You're the idea person. 
Yes. And the creative. I'm definitely. Person. Yes. <laughs> and if I say like, oh, we're going to do a launch, they're like, yes, ma'am, let's go. Right. That's that's where I thrive. Like I need to be that in that seat. I don't need to be running the day to day of the business, whether it's the agency or the brand deals or the podcast episode, like I don't need to be running all that. You're, and so you, you have stepped into the CEO role, which is what we absolutely. all want. I'm yeah. halfway in. <laughs> yes. I'm trying. I've I got honestly, a small team, but I'm like, yeah. I need. I, I'm a control freak, and I have yeah. a hard time letting go. I don't make all the best decisions, but I think yeah. I make all the best decisions. Yes. And so yes. I'm getting better at that letting go and letting my team handle things. And that's, yeah. that can be hard. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I, I don't consider myself a control freak at all, especially in the business. Once somebody has proven to me that they can handle whatever it is, yeah. I'm like, cool, let's go. Um, so I do consider myself more of a control freak with like my kids and like the way that their schedules run or the way that things happen, yeah, home you know life. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, but not in the business. And it's it's funny because I don't want to micromanage people. True. Like, I don't want to. I'm just like, okay, let's go. And when we brought on, so Bridget, that is my current full-time employee, yeah. well, operations manager. Yeah. They're both full-time employees. We moved her into that spot when my other employee left. Yes. And we brought on Cypress, who is now our, like, marketing assistant, yes. right? When we brought her on, my main message to her was nothing is an emergency. <laughs> nothing is an emergency. Like, and ever. you can't break like, anything. We'll fix it. No- yeah. Yep. She broke a website one time on a Friday night and I was like, cool, we'll deal with it on Monday. <laughs> like I'm just like not, I don't care. I don't care. And I think just really embracing this, like giving my team the ability to make those decisions yeah. and, and do and, those and things. The, already my team has made better decisions than myself. Mm-hmm. Like now that I'm letting mm-hmm. go, it's crazy crazy. So that's a good, that's a really good tip too. What digital marketing trends do you see sort of dominating in the next few years? Uh, I think, I think AI, and I don't mean necessarily as an assistant. Yeah. I mean, as a thing that you can do. So like, you know how, um, right now you could do like chat GPT prompts. Yes. You know, here's like a bucket of chat GPT prompts to help you do X, Y, and Z, or here's, prompts to help you do X, Y, and Z on this like audio AI thing. I think that's going to be a big thing in digital marketing, like copy my blank, you know, um, to do with AI, because a lot of people don't understand how to talk to AI. So I think that's going to be a huge thing is like, let me show you how I do this type of thing um, or copy my things, you know, but I also think that authenticity and going back like almost going backwards, going back to being people on our social media and not being like, you know, oh, uh, yeah. like I'm going to voice over this like audio dub on my reels and like use the word. Like, I just don't think that's working anymore. No. And so, yeah, I think just like the personal side of people is what, yeah. what I, I mean, see most. People say, you know, just be authentic so mm-hmm. often, but it's more than being authentic. It's sharing yourself like and that's some people just either don't want to do it or don't know how to do it or don't feel comfortable to doing it so sure that's how you can get ahead I I totally agree with that yeah and I don't think you have to share everything I think so many people get stuck right there it's like well I don't want to share my whole life yo I don't share my whole life either how many times have I ever mentioned my kids names on the internet never it's a handful. Yeah. Literally. Like, I'm not one of those people who won't, but I don't do it often. And, um, you know, I'm not like, I might share something about my kids, but it's not often. I don't really often share about my husband or like things yeah. like that. Like, yeah. you know, I might share that we found some chickens that laid eggs in our hay the other day. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm not sharing that like a, a horse died. She was like 159 years old. So like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to share everything. You you get to decide what you share, what's comfortable, what fits in the box of what I'm going to share on the internet and what sits outside of that. And those things you don't have to share. And it's going to be different for all of us. You know, this person over here might really want to share their kids. This person over here might not even want people to know they have kids, right? Yeah. Like this person over here might really want to share their love of Gilmore Girls, right? Like, or Taylor Swift or like whatever. And this person over here is like, oh no, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to make my whole life about 
whatever, let me share these other things. And so I think that's the biggest piece is like, yes, be authentic, be yourself, but don't feel like you have to share everything. Correct. Okay. So we're wrapping up. What are your Mm -hmm. future plans and goals for your business content as well as coaching business? Yeah. The biggest thing right now is we're really putting everything into crash. It Um, is so good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. And so like really putting everything there, like that's what I want. That's where I want people to go. I, I really just, I don't, I'm so done. I'm so done with like webinars and launches and Ugh. things like that. And so just saying like, Hey, you want to learn how to be a creator full time? Go over here. You know, you want to learn about YouTube? Go over here. You want to learn about digital products? Go over here. Like it's all in that right in that There's space. There's so much in there, you guys. I, I was I was actually shocked at how yes, much was in yeah. there. And it's constantly growing too, Well, right? and I like so. that you have two price points. One that mm-hmm. is just access. It's a library. You do whatever you want to do, figure it out. Mm-hmm. And then one that's more high, but you're getting mm-hmm. those coaching. So it's smart because that the lower one, which will get many more people because it's budget friendly, yeah. don't have access to you and gives them something to go up for. So really smart. And then we can use those coaching calls or content audits or like whatever we're doing to market that piece. Right. So it's like a very, yeah, like it's it's a very cyclical. What three things have helped you to grow your business? It could be anything, tools, advice, Mm -hmm. whatever. Podcast. Oh, yes. 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 Um, I always say I got my MBA from Apple Podcasts, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, because, and honestly, so much of it wasn't even what I learned on podcast. It was hearing myself in other people. The That moment when I had things change where like, I was like, oh, I'm charging $150 and then I'm gonna do 800. And then I went up to like 5,000. Like it was like a lot was because I heard a girl on a podcast who used to live in my town. She's not from here, but it was just very odd. She was Southern. She sounded like me and she did web design and she was talking about her six figure business. And I was like, huh? Okay. <laughs> all, I, you, I you can that. do that. <laughs> yes, I could do that. If you could do that, I could do that. And so honestly, podcasts were such a big deal for me. Um, and then I would say YouTube, obviously. Um, I mean, YouTube as a user. Of yes. YouTube. Podcast as a listener. YouTube as a YouTuber, you know, because it's just game changing. Oh, this is a big one. My team, hiring a team. I I think that's got to go in there. Whether they were employees or contractors or it doesn't matter. Um, Any help that I could get. Like I haven't managed my own inbox since 2015. I I, need to do that. (laughs) Oh, it's glorious. So bad. (laughs) My mom will be like, what email do you check? And I'm like, 0% of them. (laughs) I don't check any of them. But if you send me an email, they're going to tell me that there's an email. Because the way we have it set up is like, Bridget or Cyper, whoever's yeah. in it is, is managing the inbox. Yeah. And if it's something personal or something yeah. I need to see, but because of course there are things of that course. I need to see, they go in a folder and then I get a Voxer that's like, Hey, I moved a couple of emails in your folder. Go you should check probably them check them out. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> and then that's it. And so, um, that is, that is glorious. So having a team in, in any capacity, like I say, $200 a month or, you know, $3,000 a month or like whatever that looks like is so magical and powerful and has helped me so much. And I started with my VA at like four hours a week. Like you can do it at any budget with anyone. You can trade, you can barter, like all the things. So don't keep everything on the table. Don't assume you can't do it is my... Absolutely. No. Completely uh, agree. <laughs> Tell everyone what your freebie is and how it can help our audience. You can find it at heyjessica.com forward slash digiproduct blueprint. Um, but it is essentially going to help you figure out what kind of digital product you could do as a creator, as a business owner, whatever, and what's best for your audience, what's going to be best for you. And then, you know, get you on the right path to actually creating that thing. Yes. And she's got an immense amount of YouTube videos. Oh, I have a lot. A lot. Subject as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I will have all the links down below, but she has an amazing podcast also called In Your Earballs, which is so, so you. In your awesome. earball. It is, it is, it is an amazing podcast, but it is so you. It's yeah. just thank you. It's so you. Thank you so much for your valuable advice and your time today. This was me. such a pleasure, and I really, really appreciated it. And I will see you in Crash. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun.